Hello ladies and gentlemen, the patrons must be thanked. Thanks to Alan, Billy, Liz, Brett, Caleb, Chen, Christoph, David, Edia, Eric, Gary, Joey, the other Joey, Matthew, Miguel, Mathaldu, Raymond, Rodrigo, Sack Chief, and Z for their support. You can support me by finding the links in the description to my Patreon and my PlayAsia affiliate link. Enjoy the video. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima, and does this really need any introduction whatsoever? Is, is there any, is there any point? No, not really, so we might as well go have a look around. There is actually a lot to see in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. We'll do what we usually do, then we'll go through the options, and there's actually a... There's a ton of things to go over, there really is. You have all sorts of different rules for things like squad strikes and tournaments and just regular things that you can create and edit on the fly so you can play just the way you like. You can make custom balancing so that some characters will be stronger or weaker. This is the route, um, not the router, the roster that I've got unlocked. I don't even have all the characters yet. Eight hours in and I've barely got half of them. Being able to change the radar, doing highlight your teammates, having echo fighters be separate. Three different sound sliders, and you have different sound options for every way you play the game, which is actually kind of amazing. Uh, you can change the brightness, of course, for, again, for both of them. You can change certain sets of controls, I haven't played around with that. You can make your online profile, and that's what mine looks like. I'm playing on my Australian account, because that'll let me get the game a few hours earlier, if you didn't see the bloody five-hour live stream I did recently, and of course you got languages. So, there is a lot to go over, but we will save some time just hop straight into some gameplay, and by that I mean we'll go and play Classic Mode. The one thing I don't really like about this game is the menus, because it's all over the place with what you might expect to be somewhere. It can get kind of annoying trying to remember where something specific is. But we're going to go play Classic Mode, which is of course the Classic Mode, the Arcade Mode, the mode that you go and play when you want to play around for a bit. So. We're going to play as Marth, I think. But of course, we can play as anyone we like. We started with a base roster of eight, but I have slowly been unlocking other characters via different means. The major means that you unlock characters in classic mode is that when you beat a mode with a certain character, you unlock another character. I believe when I... Who was the first one I unlocked? I don't believe remember. <laughs> but I've been unlocking characters like crazy, thankfully, so... Hopefully it won't take me too much longer to get everywhere, but again, I'm going to play as Marth. You can also play this mode with two people, but I don't have friends, so there you go. The route is actually preset for every character, which is nice, because it gives you a little bit of variety instead of having to rely on the same sort of structure for everyone. So, you can choose the intensity, which is basically the difficulty. Intensity isn't actually as bad as, as I remember it being the like handful of times I played the one on 3DS. The intensity is surprisingly, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, flexible. It goes up as you do well and it goes down as you do badly, so if you have to continue or whatever. But I'm going to start with intensity 3.0, just for the hell of it. We can also use a ticket to up our rewards, which we are going to do. And we'll understand what rewards are later on in the video. But for now, we're just going to hop right in and beat the crap out of a Charizard on what looks like a Fire Emblem stage. So, this is Smash Brothers. If you've never played it before, you're probably living under a rock. But, it is a very simple concept. It is it's not, like my, it's not like very many other fighting games. The general idea is that, at least in the default mode, because there is a mode that lets you play entirely with health, you're, and you and your enemy will have percentage meters. They start out at 0% and they get higher with every attack you land. And once you have landed enough attacks, the enemy will start flying further away with each attack. On a 0% attack, they won't go very far at all, but if they get up to 50 or 100%, they will actually start going pretty high in the air. So you want to make sure that you get hit as little as possible, because being knocked beyond the bounds of the screen and then just a little bit further will lose you either a life or it will give the enemy a point. Either of these things you do not want, because there are multiple different ways you can play. Such as stamina battle, where you can have different HP. There's timed battles, which can give you... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? There's timed battles, which can give you uh, three minutes to get as many points as possible. 
And there's also stock battles, which give you an individual amount of lives. And there's a couple of other weird things going on as well. The basic controls are simple, but there are also lots of neat little things to learn. It's very easy to pick up, but hard to master, which is a good thing for a party game. So, you move with the analog stick, you can jump by pressing up on the analog stick or by pressing the X button. You can also do special moves with... Oh, you can do regular attacks with the A button, and you can also choose a different kind of attack by holding a direction and pressing the A button. You also have special moves that you can activate by doing the same thing, but with the B button. So, for example... One of Marth's special moves is on right and left and B, it's the Dancing Blade, which lets him throw out a series of four sword strikes, and he can determine what direction the strikes go in by moving the analog stick after the first strike. He also has an up and B ability, which does a big uppercut, which lets him recover. His down and B ability is a counter, so if anyone decides to attack him while he's kicked, while he's countering, or at least just after he's initially done it, I'm not going to be able to demonstrate because I'm I'm terrible at timing this shit in the middle of actually trying to talk about it. But yes, uh, if you time it perfectly, it will immediately counter and do some damage back. Now this is just Marth's move set. Every character in the game has their own set of normal and special attacks, and it can get pretty damn silly because. There are 70 characters in this game. Yes, 70. I remember playing Super Smash Bros. Melee and thinking that the 25 or so characters that game had was ridiculous. But the big selling point of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is that every character that's ever been in Smash since the very beginning is included in this game. So, they, the fact that they have 73 characters is ridiculous and they all have their own set of special moves. Some are inherently similar to each other. There are several characters that they call Echo Fighters, which are basically just fighters based on another character. But at the same time, the amount of unique fighters in the game that are completely separate from each other is still well over 50, maybe even 60. So the amount of unique characters there are to play and fight with, their attacks, their abilities, and just the overall experience of using them is incredibly varied. Marth is a very interesting sort of... He is a pretty... What's the word I'm looking for? In the middle of the road character. He's got a lot of attack and defense abilities. Then you've got someone like Bowser, who's bloody huge and just focuses entirely on the attack. You've got Pichu, who's tiny and quick, but actually damages himself with every attack. You've got Little Mac, who is a fantastic character, because he's basically a boxer, but he stays on the ground all the time. So if he gets in the air, he can attack while he's in the air, but it's not very effective. So you want to be on the ground with him, throwing out punches as much as possible. Every character also has a unique final smash, which they can earn by either destroying a smash ball, or in some circumstances, earn by uh, getting a certain meter up and above a certain amount. And... The amount of different characters there are with... Ooh. Right, gotcha. I'm just, just going to take out your friend. Goodbye. Yeah, the amount of variety there is in the character roster is ridiculous. Not to mention, it's one great big Nintendo hoedown. But there's also a few other interesting ones, like bloody... Excuse me. Like bloody Ryu from Street Fighter. He plays exactly like how you'd expect him to. You have to do the quarter circles and half circles to actually put to actually get their special moves. It's amazing. This is the one part of classic mode that I don't like. Every character eventually has to go through this little obstacle course here, collecting their gold orbs in order to uh, get extra score. It feels entirely unnecessary. But yes, the character volume, the character volume and sheer variety is just ridiculous. And the fact that they were willing to go so far with this game when it was going to be such a massive pain in the ass to include literally every game ever is just a sign to either how crazy or how visionary bloody, uh, I can't remember his bloody name when I really need to. 
the director of this series is. He, he's a bloody madman. Yeah, that was the special stage. You'll be seeing that a lot. So the final round of each classic mode is always going to be a big boss. This boss in particular is Rathalos from Monster Hunter. The uh, bloody Richter from Castlevania has Dracula. There's a bunch of Master and Crazy Hand appearances. It can get pretty silly. You just need to go in and try and beat the crap out of them as much as humanly possible. Classic mode works a little bit strangely from what I remember. You only get one life, but you can continue as much as you like, but it costs you in-game currency. So don't worry about it if you fail, you can just keep going. Although one of the achievements in the game is to get... Um, one of the achievements in the game is to get... Whatchamacallit. Is to get Intensity 9.9 .9 and successfully finish the game. Which you're probably not going to be able to do if you have to continue even once. So... Have fun with that. I haven't actually fought Rathalos yet. It's kind of annoying because I, again, I just... I've been playing a lot of classic mode. Like you saw all those characters that had the stars next to the names. Those are the ones that I've actually been able to um, finish the game with. Oh shit. Ow. Those are the ones I've actually been able to finish the game with, but... For whatever bloody reason. Yes. Gotcha. But still, I haven't actually run into Rathalos yet. More than once. Any, oh, not, not even more than once. This is the first time. So. There's a lot of variety in the general fights that you'll be doing. Because they have this tendency to change things up. Give you a giant fighter to fight. A metal fighter. Put some kind of weird... Um, Ow. Put some kind of, like, just weird discrepancy in every fight. This is just a thing that they do a lot of. And it works pretty well. Gives you a lot of variety when you're playing through the classic mode. The only downside is that they don't, um... Oh, Christ. The only downside is that they don't give you different routes every time you play a certain character, but... At the same time, I can live with that, because I can imagine that being a massive pain in the ass to properly set up. Ooh, god fire. Come on, I can kill him. Got him! Didn't even die. 137 percent Any other attack probably would have knocked me straight out of the ring, but... Hey, I got him! And of course, as is tradition in Smash Brothers, they will let you scroll through the entire credits. We're not actually going to sit here and do that because I've already done it a few times and it can get quite boring after the first time, I must say. But it does actually earn you extra rewards if you go through the effort of doing it. So if you're looking to grind up for the game's other modes, you're more than welcome to give it a shot. Me, we're just going to let the time hit zero out and go straight through. Finals so, since we have finished the campaign, we get a few spirits. Including Solar the Snake from Elgia Solar 2 and Smeargle the Pokemon. We also get a music track, some snacks, and what appears to be some kind of items. Which is interesting. And we also get our next new fighter. And if you can't tell who this is, this has got to be Ryu. You have to do a one-on-one -on -one fight, and if you don't absolutely, positively, monstrously fuck it up like I just did, you will get a new character out of it. Oh my god. That was bad even for me. But, yeah, there you go. So as you can see, I've been finishing relatively over the five range. It's not hard. It's not massively hard, but again, it's probably pretty difficult to get up to 9.9 .9 and stay there. So, yeah. Lots of characters, each with their own... Uh, each with their own routes, so you've got plenty to do in that regard. And that's just the classic mode. You have a full-on training mode. You have Mob Smash, which has you fighting against 100 characters, an all-star bout, 
And of course, a fight where everyone is absolutely demonic and you need to kill at least three people. I've had trouble killing just one. So there you go. You can also put a fighter into your amiibo. I haven't actually been able to test this functionality out. Not because I don't have amiibo, but because this game takes a ridiculous amount of time to go through all of it anyway. And you can also create me fighters, which are just extra characters from the Wii version that you can change the outfits of and you unlock them over time. So let's just make one just as a demonstration. I haven't actually done anything yet. Funnily enough, this me actually looks just like me. So if we make a me brawler, we can give him all sorts of different gear. We can give, we can give him Daisy's crown, because why the hell not. Uh, vampire garb. And we'll make him pink. We can even change his special moves. Cool. We can even turn on voices and all that, but we're just gonna we're just gonna save him. Uh, me fighter's name. Bet you thought I was gonna type Waluigi there, but no. Now that I've done that, it'll probably unlock them as characters to actually select. So there we go. There is so much else. We have the vault. So we can actually listen to all the music in the game here if we want. Some of, them do, some of it doesn't start unlocked by default, but look at that, 600, 736 tracks just by default. And then there's a few others you can unlock as well. You can even make playlists out of them and listen to them while the bloody switch is turned off. And I haven't even touched this part of the game yet. You can even listen to the bloody voices if you like. You can even change the music that plays on stages as long as it remains within the same theme. You can have... you can save replays of battles. Has it been saving mine by default? I don't recall how to save. I don't think the game ever told me. Don't have any save replays. You can save it on the results screen, right. I haven't been paying too close attention to that. And you can even convert them to video so that uh, when the game data changes it remains the same. You can come in and check your records, including... Your stats, as you can see, about 8 hours of uh, powered on time and 5 hours of actual fighting time. Tons of stats. Like, oh my god, that's a lot of stats. Milestones, so you can see when you did specific things. Battle data, so you can see how you've been doing online and offline and who you've been using the most and all of that stuff. Smash tags, which is stuff you pull from people you've played online if you win against them. I've won against a few people, not not every match that I've gone into, but I've actually done alright. And you can see a list of them. You've also got what's well, basically achievements, but they do give you in-game rewards for actually pulling it off. So get 10 types of me headgear actually owed me a cat hat. And acquiring a total of 7,737 spirit points got me a snack. You can also change uh not change. Uh, skip certain challenges using these mallets that you get, but yeah, as you can see, some of them you can't skip whatsoever, including Clear Intensity 99. There are 124 achievements in this game, which will probably take forever for you to do. Watch cutscenes, have some tips, and also go to the shop to buy stuff, including spirits, and hat outfits, and music, and snacks, and just all sorts of stuff like that. I would buy that! If I could afford it. But look at the amount of gold that you need. Good god, that would actually be useful on Little Mac. But unfortunately we can't use that right now, so we'll just back out. We can talk about online. I'm not going to actually show off any sort of online battle, but I will go in and give you a quick overview of how this works. So you can spectate battles if you like. So you can literally just drop in and watch people fighting, and you know what, we're gonna do that. So, you can actually go and, you know, actually fight people, but we're just gonna let these guys play to get play out in front of us while I describe a few more of the game's interesting mechanics. Like, this is a neat idea! Like, imagine getting a bunch of your mates together, and sitting them all down, hopping onto Spectate, and just do- getting like a stack of poker chips and just betting on people to win. Imagine doing that. That actually sounds like a good time. Three, two, one, so anyway, this has been... I assume this is... Going just fine. But anyway, we've got four characters here. It's a 2-1-2 team fight. And there doesn't appear to be any, stock, any stocks, so it's just time. 
So the more knockouts one team gets, they will win. And we've got four different characters here, each with their own different way of going about things. You've got Snake, who's a pretty heavy character, but focuses a lot on hand-to-hand -hand combat. You've got King K. Rule, who is massive and is just he just looks great running across the ground like that. Richter, who is probably my favorite character in the entire game based on style alone, because I love the Dracula X Chronicles, and he looks just like he does in that game. He's got all the moves. There's his cross right there. And then you've got Lucas from Earthbound, who can fire out remote-controlled balls of electricity. There's items that you can pick up that can do massive damage or just be outright jokes. There's a ton of different items in the game that are a lot of fun to use. I know some, obviously people aren't going to turn them on for things like competitive play, but it's entirely possible to do that as well, as we'll demonstrate shortly. And there are so many other different kinds of mechanics. You've got dodging and shielding. If you want your shield to stay up for as long as possible, you need to let go of your shield just before you actually get attacked. That will result in a perfect shield, which won't break. But if you have your shield off too long, it'll break. You'll get dizzy and you'll get some free hits. Or you'll take some free hits, I should say. There's short pop air attacks. There's bloody... Uh, dodging becomes harder to do every time. There's all sorts of weird little mechanics that come into it here and there that make it a really deep game while still being surprisingly watchable from the outset. I think we all know who's got this one in the bag. It's got to be the Richter and the Snake team, which is a good team. They, that, that is a good cross. Except King K. Rule just got his final smash in, which is blowing up DK Isle from Donkey Kong 64. That is... that is applause worthy, mainly because I remember that scene so well, and god damn. We also have an assist trophy, which is that guy from Bayonetta whose name I can never remember. I still need to get around to playing those games. I've seen a few videos, but yeah. And King K. Rule's got the final smash again because he broke the final smash ball. Let's see if he can actually get it out and actually pull out a win. Alright, he got Richter. Oh no. Oh, it's sudden death. They tied. So the screen zooms in closer. Everybody dies on one good hit. And the blue team comes back and wins it. Oh man, that is not how I would have expected that to go down in the slightest. What a match. That, that, that was hype. That was absolute hype. Good job, blue team. Unfortunately, Snake didn't really pull his weight there. So yeah, that was an example of the game's netcode actually working. Now, that, that, that did happen in Germany. So there was probably something that was caching the round as it was happening and sending it straight to me. But I have played a bunch of online and I've been playing on Wi-Fi. You can hook up your Switch to Ethernet via USB to Ethernet adapters. But I haven't even needed to do that. The online code has been pretty solid. I assume I've been playing with Australians because I bought an Australian copy. And I've been playing on, Australian, uh, on, a, on an Australian account. But yes, it still works pretty well too. So, you've got a few things you can do here. You can go on to Quick Play, which will just immediately put you in. Or you can visit a battle arena. I'll go and have a look at one just to see if we can, you know, just take a quick look before we um, actually go and do something else. So, let's say I do one-on-one. -on -one. So, I just hit Join. And you'll have a few options here. You'll be able to... when the game loads. You'll be able to drop into the queue here so that uh, the loser or the loser or the winner, depending on who they pick, will drop out. You can hop on the spectator stance and you can also come here, down here and change your fighter. I've been playing as Lil Mac online because I've been getting actually pretty damn good with him. So yes, the there is a fair amount of functionality. Of course, you can only join your friends arenas. But with Quick Play as well, there's actually something really neat going on with it. You can actually set your preferred rules. Oh, not to mention you can actually play co-op, which is neat. So if you turn on your preferred rules, you can actually choose whether or not you want to play just regular old four-player Smash, one-on-one -on -one or team battle. You can choose whether or not you want to play on stamina or stock. And if it finds someone who has the same rules as you, excuse me, they will, you will probably get plopped into a match with them. Which is a really cool idea. It, I think it'll, like, give up and put you into a regular old matchup. I can't find anything, but still. That's a nice feature to have for countries that'll have 
high populations. So that's all there as well, but and also you can do background matchmaking. So you can set it all up and have it so that you can just play uh, you can just play around in the menus in the background. You can't go into an actual game because it won't actually find you a game while you're in there. But you can just wait out in the menus for it to happen. So if you want to do something like play around with your spirits, you can do that. You can also set up whether or not you want to use spirits online with your friends, but I don't think there's any sort of competitive way to do it. There are also all sorts of other modes in just the regular Smash mode, including Stro Squad Strike, which lets you play basically three on three with characters cycling in one at a time. Tournaments, and you can even do things like custom smashes to play around with it a bit. Smash down, which means everybody picks a fighter and then that fighter becomes available for the rest of the game. And of course, Super Sudden Death, which is a little bit strange, but oh well, it's there. And you can even play with up to eight people. But that leaves everything except the spirits and we have even more explanations to do. So. We're not going to do that right now. What we're going to do is we're just going to hop straight into the World of Light. Now, there hasn't actually been much in the way of story for World of Light. I've been playing for about three hours of the World of Light thing. Yeah, three and a half. And I've cleared 74 spaces and only gotten nine fighters. Everybody is in World of Light, as far as I'm aware. And I've still only got like one-seventh of the roster, which is ridiculous. So here we are. This is World of Light. Basically... It's a big world map that you control around, and when you run into one of those glowing dots, you will fight somebody. Like, for example, Xerneas. You constantly take minor damage, only certain Pokemon will emerge from Pokeballs, and the enemy is injured but powerful. But if you back up from here and go and have a look at another dot, like Shedinja, the enemy reflects projectiles, the enemy will occasionally be invincible, and it's stamina battle. So, the way this works in the, in the world of light, is that you get, um, excuse me, you get all of these random battles. Ow. You get all of these random battles that you can play, and they've all got their own unique little conditions about them, right? So, this guy is obviously going to be completely invincible most of the time, but I got him. I got, I got through the shield and I got him, so... I've beat him, and I get the spirit, and the spirit will help me out later on. I also get some rewards, such as skill spheres. This will clear out the path, and I can continue. And that's basically the entire thing. It's a massive, massive bunch of weirdly set up battles. The stage is covered in fog, and the enemy favors down specials. We're going to do something quite a bit different. We're going to swap to another thing, and for some reason I've got an irreversible control. Fog immunity. Perfect. So that, that'll be a good demonstration of a second. That'll be a good um, demonstration of a, a support spirit. So you fight all the characters at some point or another. You will fight all of them. And there is no fog on this stage whatsoever because I have the fog immunity spirit. So this is just a regular old fight now. We just need to try and win this. By smashing them off the stage. Like so. Cool. Oop, fake banana. Shoots... That, that, that's it. Shoots one fake bullet. And away he goes. Yep, so that was an example of a support spirit coming and helping me out. Just turning it into a regular old fight. Which is nice. The map is absolutely massive so if i hit the l button it'll zoom out and it'll let me see like the one third of the map that i've currently got unlocked because there are tons of little blockades and things that you've got that can only be removed by having certain spirits you'll find them by exploring the landscape so you can do that so now the enemy will suddenly have a final smash when the enemy's at high damage. That is a bad sign. And the enemy prefers grabs and throws. So we're going to want something powerful. That'll do. I know I'm not explaining spirits. I'm just giving you a little bit more gameplay so we don't waste too much time in menus. Come at me, Jiggly. Ha! <laughs> Threw him off the edge! Threw him off the edge! Nice! 
<laughs> okay, I got an ace spirit there, and some rewards. Cool. So this is just the way World of Light goes. You go in, you find some battles, and you play them, and you continue on. You unlock rewards as you go. Like, what's in here? Nihiligo! Okay, screen flip immunity. That's a pretty useful spirit ability, actually. You do also find other locations. So if I pull back, for example, we can come into the exploration area. I sent off some spirits to go and find me some treasure a while back. What do they brought me? These are all like level 99 spirits. They should be doing me some favors. They brought me some spirit points. Choose up the four treasure trackers. All right, so I can actually sort my spirits by descending level. Let's send off some level 30s. So we'll, we'll send um, Waddle D, Charlotte Oren, uh, bloody Don Bongo, and Rabbit Mario. Because yes, the spirit diversity is ridiculous. And I will get onto that as soon as we feel the need. So keep it up. They will need a certain amount of hours in real game time to bring back stuff, so I'll just leave them to their business. You can also visit shops, which we can actually do from here. Oh, we can also go to the dojo. So if we go to the dojo, we can actually see our spirits that have been training. So they've got a style now, and their style increases their ground power and their move speed, but it decreases air power and jump. So if I use these characters, that's what'll happen. And I can also do the same thing with other spirits, but I won't do that just to save some time. And of course, we can also go shopping. So if I go shopping, we can stop by Beetle's tent and buy some extra items. So I can buy the Labrador Retriever Spirit from Nintendogs, because of course, we can also buy some snacks. And some support items, because why not? But we're not gonna we're not gonna buy any more stuff because we don't really need to. So we'll go do a couple more battles. Let's see if I can find my way down here. Nope. Down here, down here. Okay, oh there. Left, left, left. Cyrus and Reese. Okay, I'm gonna need to equip some um stronger stuff. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about the low gravity. It's actually going to... It's, it'll actually probably help me out in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, that'll do. Doesn't really matter. Gravity is reduced and certain items will appear after a while. So they have a ton of different abilities going on like this, you know? So you can... Whoops. So you can be playing a ton of different kinds of... Oh, you can be playing a ton of different kinds of battles in this in the smallest amount of time possible. I'm just trying to avoid the... I'm just trying to avoid them because they're surprisingly annoying. There we go. Throw that all away. And now it's my turn to annoy them with the with the bloody curry. There's dashing, there's, there's all sorts of weird little conditions that they got going on with this. And it it makes for some really interesting variety. Because you never know exactly what's gonna happen next, and it's cool as hell. And there are some challenges which are legitimately difficult that, that require tons of preparation to really get going. I'm just trying to avoid them because they... Gotcha. Oh, come on. I landed on my own thing. That's not great. Uh, final smash time. Smack. Dead. Awesome. You do final smash just by pressing B, by the way. It took me a little while to figure that out. And I got a ace support spirit, but I get an ore club when I start, which is great. So, once you've fought your way through enough of these dudes, you will get 
to fight other characters. Oh, also apparently Cyrus and Reese are able to fix bridges for me, so they've opened up two different ways, which is cool. So now I get to fight the Duck Hunt duo. These battles are usually pretty easy, so I don't need to worry too much about what spirits I'm using. Not saying they're not difficult, but after that fight we just had, these guys will be super simple. So yeah, there's a ton of variety. A, a fair few of them are actually based on, like, certain things in certain games. It could be kind of neat, actually. Cheeky. Cheeky! Yeah, my tribe to shield it. Got my perfect shield perfect there, but screwed it up that time. But I do have the ability to counter. I also have a beam sword, good night. So not only has that unlocked Duck Hunt duo for the World of Light, but it's also unlocked them for my main roster. If you don't have a character already, they'll be in the main roster once you come out of World of Light mode. So yeah, that's how you unlock characters in World of Light. And there are of course some other mechanics to go over. You already saw the bridge building and that is actually the dojo. With that said, let's go into what spirits are. Oh, but first we'll actually have a look at the skill tree. Skill, you earn the skill orbs by doing battles and then you can invest them into upgrades that will only work in this mode. So, uh, do I want critical health attack? Do I want extra healing item? We'll do perfect shield recovery. This might actually tell me to learn my shields properly. But still, yeah. Let's talk about spirits. So spirits are these little collectible items that you can get. So for example, I've got the Spectre Knight equipped. So I think that's a, I think that's a Shovel Knight? Uh, yeah, that's the Shovel Knight character. And you've also got support spirits. You've got primary and you've got support. Primary spirits start out with a certain power level. They also give you an attack and defense boost. And they can also be leveled up. All of them also have their own individual number of slots. Like, so, Mel Gear Rex, for example, has three slots. Solid Snake has two. Xant only has one. And they also have their own special abilities. Like, for example, uh, Raymark 3 has Lightweight. So, that'll make me jump higher. Venusaur has Fire Weakness. So, that'll make me, obviously, weak to fire. There are also some spirits that are special in that you can only enhance them at level 99. But to enhance them, you basically have to reset them to level 1, but that means they can get ridiculously powerful. Like, for example, compare Raymark 3 at 8,600 power to Wart, who's at 3,000 power at level 54. So even if he gets like double the power once he hits level 99, he's going to be nowhere near Raymark 3 because he took more effort to actually accumulate his stats. We can come here to level them up. So if I wanted to level up the Spectre Knight, I could give him some snacks. So I could give him a couple of medium snacks, that'll push his level up to 46, and that'll also give him a bunch of extra power. And I can also get cause by dismissing spirits. So if we back out to the main menu here, uh, no, that's, that's the party. Go back out one step further me. Now if we go to manage our spirits, we can dismiss spirits. So, I haven't actually done this before, but I know how it works. So, if we want to, we can dismiss them. Uh, right, okay. So, we can dismiss our spirits. So, let's say I want to get rid of Deku Link, the Poppy Bros. No, I don't want to get rid of the Poppy Bros. I think they give me something cool. And Mappo. Let's just say we get rid of them. They'll leave behind powerful cores. So, I'll get some spirit points out of them. And, I'll get some cores. 
I can use these cores to level people up and also to summon new spirits. So if I go to summon, can I actually... Uh, I don't think I'll be able to, but... Oh, I can actually... Oh, all slots must be filled. Right, so if I fill that, but, yeah. Okay, I can use Gordo. And I can also use Muddy Mole. So now that I've done all that, I can summon... Knuckles. Sweet. So now that I've summoned Knuckles, he's got... He's an ace spirit. There are some spirits that are just more powerful than others in the grand scheme of things. So you can summon different spirits. And all the different spirits have their own different capabilities, their own different abilities, and their own strength. So if you get a good ace spirit, you probably want to level them up as much as possible. Because they will be ridiculously strong in that sense. You can see that uh, some spirits have one star, some spirits have two. Can't use these ones because they're off treasure seeking. Can't love these ones because they're already max level. But yes, their power levels are ridiculous. But you do kind of need some ridiculous power levels because that power level actually does come back because that power level does actually affect how much damage you deal and take in the middle of a fight. This can make all the difference. I was playing a particular spirit battle mission where... I was Pac-Man trying to fight off a couple of characters while rockets were raining down on our heads. One rocket with uh, the default set I had available was enough to wipe the floor with me. But once I took the effort to level up and get my team power as high as humanly possible, I was able to take five or six without running into a problem and successfully win the match. So you do need to keep around as many strong spirits as you can get your hands on because they will, they will obviously help you a lot. So how do I get into that dungeon? Is it this way? Yes, it is. We do have dungeons from time to time. The bosses are usually at the end of these. And they will also contain... You should be able to route electricity from here, right? So I use you like this, I assume? Correct. Right, I actually need to go back and grab that guy and bring him back, I suppose? But then we, we run into a fight with Dr. Light at 10,000 power. It gets worse than this. Uh, you definitely need more power than that sometimes. Yeah. 10,000 power. And there is also a whole rock, paper, scissors system going on. Thankfully, the auto pick is actually relatively useful. It'll pick you team power, it'll pick you the right one so that you'll be at, a, at an advantage. Sometimes it won't pick the most powerful one you've got. Sometimes it'll pick something that's a fair bit weaker. But to be fair, sometimes you want this because the weaker you are when you win one of these fights, the more rewards you'll win. Whether it be money, spirit points, snacks, or even extra spirits on top, right? So the only person I actually need to kill in this is Dr. Mario, but as you can see, He's actually trying to avoid the fight. Because he's a dick like that. So, we want to try and, um... Tr we want to try and take out Mega Man as fast as humanly possible. If I can actually get a hit in on him, because goddamn. that lets me hold a smash attack effectively infinitely, but yeah, let's just try and um, let's just try and beat the crap out of Mega Man before he finishes me off. I don't think that's going to happen in this case. Thankfully, spirit battles here aren't limited. You can try them as much as you like, and of course you can change your party members so that you can try and do a little bit better. So you can come here and see all the different things you've got available, like I can equip a bomb -omb. 
I can also uh, change my. I can. No, weapon resist won't actually help me out that much here. Uh, what about item gravitation? That'll bring items closer to me. Bomb on equipped, so that it'll um, do that. Oh, I can also turn on my fast final smash meter. So yeah, we'll try that. So hopefully this will give me a smash attack real quick. And you can also see it's kind of got a, a sort of reference to Dr. Light going on here. I think this is meant to be a Mega Man themed area, judging purely by the... Um, shit. Judging purely by the thing they got going on here with the... Let's do some damage to Mario while he's in my field of view. I can just focus on um, killing Dr. Mario, but Mega Man is not going to make that easy. So yeah, it looks like, like my strategy for this is going to be wait for my final smash meter to charge up, then just try and get Dr. Mario with it. Just ignore Mega Man for as long as humanly possible. But that just doesn't happen sometimes. And my dash has become less effective as I go. Alright. My final smash is full and I need to hit one of them with it, so please let it be Mario. Nope. Gotcha. Yes! One. Didn't even need to take out Mega Man. And I now have a support spirit that gives me immunity to zap flaws, which is a condition that can come up every so often. So if you're looking to just build up your spirit collection so that you can, say, disassemble them and get better spirits out of them, you don't have to always be playing World of Light mode. There is another way you can go and you can go about this. Right, I can't actually can't actually take that one away. So I'm assuming I have to come back with another spirit later to budge this up. And yep, this is going very puzzling. I'm not into this. Let's let's just stop there, because that is actually a pretty good example. There has been next to no story other than uh, the big evil baddie has taken everyone's spirits and sealed them away, and you have to beat the crap out of everyone in order to successfully actually, like, you know, get them back, so whatever. But as I was saying, you don't actually need to play that to actually get spirits. There is another mode. And since I spent long enough in World of Light, I get to do a fight with Jigglypuff. Three, two, one, go. Cool. You bloody sleepy piece of shit, come here. I, I fought you earlier in a spirit battle. You should not be very difficult to deal with. Come on then. That was a miss. That, that was a, that was that was embarrassing. All right. Gotcha. gotcha. Again. Short hop attack, and that still didn't help me out much. Ooh, that sucked. Alright, let's get somewhere a little bit safer. Come here. Yeah, I'm not gonna- oh. Well, I fell for that one, and I failed. Thankfully, you get the ability to... You get the ability to challenge them again, if I were to back out here and go to games and more. See that? Down the bottom right? Challenge the approach. So, if you're going back in there, if I lose, I can fight them again, but we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to go to the Spirit Board. So, you understand the concept behind Spirit Battles, where it's an interesting sort of challenge battle with different conditions and stuff like that? Well, that is what the spirit board is. You basically just have a bunch of spirits lined up and ready to go for you to fight. You just need to pick your spirits, go in and try and beat them. The enemy favors side specials and all fighters have reduced jump power. Also, there's three of the Diddy Kongs. Sure.
Thankfully, I equipped Lightweight, so I can actually jump. So now that I've done that, I get an opportunity to free the spirit, which is done by shooting through this hole in the shield and getting him by the skin of me teeth. So I have now got a DJ as a spirit. Cool. Some free stuff. My spirit levels up a little. And I, I have to wait five minutes for the slot to refill. But I've actually got some board items, so I can shuffle everyone that's here if I want to. And let's check out Magnus. Now, I said that the spirit diversity in this game is insane. There are so many different spirits. And allow me to go over an example that I found in the game during the stream I did of the game on, um... Of the stream I did off the game when it came out at midnight here in Australia. You know what happened? I was playing and I got a spirit and I recognized them immediately as well to be fair they did have the little um they did have the little thing saying their title above their names but the two characters were the main characters of a game called Zayeki no Reginled and for those of you who have never heard of that game allow me to fill you in. It was a Wii exclusive it never came out of Japan. It was made by Sandlot, the people who made Earth Defense Force. And you know what happened? It, and you know what it was? It was a Norse-themed hack and slasher with the sort of, um, no oh dear. It was a Norse-themed hack and slasher with the same sort of gameplay as Earth Defense Force, only, you know, with physical weaponry. I lost. And I didn't think anyone in the West even knew about Zygeki no Reginlev. So the fact that it actually made it over as a spirit. I can go and have a look at my spirit collection and show you that actually. So if I go and have a look at my inventory. How many spirits are there? 1200. Wonderful. Uh, how do I sort them? Um, sort them by name? Sort them by last used maybe? Oh yeah, there we go. So now all my... Uh, Spirits can appear here. But yeah, the the stupid amount of characters. Yeah, there they are. Frey and Freya from Zygeki no, Zangeki no Reginlev. Not Zygeki, Zangeki. That is just ridiculous. If it gets that obscure to the point where you literally have a weird Japanese game like that being on the spirit list, that is a ridiculous amount of cool spirits to find. That is awesome in so many ways. And there are an absolute ton to find. So, if you were worried about the game not having much in the way of, like, actual single player content, let me summarize that for you. So, you've got World of Light, which I've played for about three to four hours at this point. I fought how many battles? I fought 80 battles, cl uh, cleared only 10 fighters, and I've barely got a third of the map unlocked. You've also got the spirit board, so you, if you want to just drop in and play some random as fuck battles from time to time, you can do just that. I gotta try and win this. I, I need to try and get me a, a wedding Bowser spirit. What's my strongest red? Uh, filter by... Um, power descending. He's my strongest red. Well, that's not great. Uh, Alright, he's, he's land style, which might actually be good for me, and so is he, actually, and so is Freya and Freya. Should I level up, Frank? No, I should level up Sigma. He's got land style, so let's level him up. Let's get the strongest dude I possibly can for this. I bought a bunch of these earlier in the store, which is why I have so many. Alright, so he's now at maximum power, which is 8869. You can also just pick a, um, a, a thingless spirit, a, a tributeless spirit. Okay, we got... Okay, fast one, we'll smash meter. And we will equip 
hang on, we need to sort these again by effect. Or by skill, I should say. So now I can choose what I want to equip. There we are, Bomb Man. So now I'm going to have a Bomb Bomb, a Final Smash Meter, and I'm going to be roughly stronger than him. You lose if your CPU ally is KO'd and he's got increased attack power. Not great, but... Oh! No wonder! Okay! Come on, Bowser. Gotcha! Yes! I went in prepared and I was... Oh, I need to... Yeah, I need to... Right. Three, four, five, six. Got him! I got me a wedding bowser! And he is actually pretty damn strong for a level 1 spirit. Shame he can't be upgraded, but... Yeah. So let me just, um... Oh hey, it's Neo from Xenoblade Chronicles 2! No, no, I'll get distracted. So, you've got the adventure mode, which arguably has a fair few hours of gameplay. You've got the spirit board, so if you just want to go and fight some random battles or some random dudes, you can drop in here every five minutes and play some. You've got, of course got the whole spirit collection thing going on. You've got... Oops. You've got an, a unique classic mode for every single fight up, all 70 of them. You've got training, you've got mob smash modes, just as nice little side extras. You have all sorts of fun little smash modes here, from regular old battles to squad strike to tournaments if you've got friends, to being able to go online and do all sorts of weird crap. You can even bring your spirits along if the person making the room approves of it. That is, that is a lot of stuff. And considering just the overwhelming quality of the game with all the different things you can do, all the variety of the characters, the the great action of the just general battles, and the basic just well-roundedness of the entire collection, it is it is a really, really good game. I haven't been this into a Smash game since Melee, and that is a really good sign. I played it for five hours straight from midnight the night it launched and I wasn't even tired when I gave up on it. So, I, I wasn't feeling tired anyway. It hit me pretty quick after I stopped playing, but god damn. It is legit one of the best games I've played in a while. And I know some people will probably be like, oh, you're just selling out. Oh, you're just saying it because you got a Nintendo, you got, you got a Nintendo bias, blah, blah. I'm the sort of person who thought Nintendo was going downhill after their bloody efforts with the Wii U, and I am so happy that I was wrong. Because, god damn, it is, it is good to have a really nice Smash game like this. Not to mention, you can take it on the go with you. You can play with single Joy-Cons, so if you want a one versus one a mate, you can do that. I did play a few games in, um, I did play a few games in handheld mode, and it did hold up, but at the same time, my Joy-Cons are mine. I think they're actually starting to break, so, my controller lost, uh, my controller disconnected more than a couple of times. It was kind of annoying. And, yeah, you can just, you can even play local wireless. Get two switches, everybody with bloody a single joint con, and you can do a four-player smash. Or you can bring them all over and you can literally just watch some matches if you want. You can grind for hours to get all the spirits, or you can just play through a classic mode match every now and again. It'll take you forever to unlock all the bloody characters because, as we can see via my bloody Smash menu, uh, not counting the... Not counting the, um... Whatchamacallit? Not counting the two that I haven't even got yet. I barely have half the roster after eight hours of play. So... Even the effort of just getting everyone alone can take you a good 20 to 30 hours. You can just unlock everyone within like 90 minutes using a method that's been put on the internet that was found because the game got leaked. But, yeah. It is a really damn good game. 
And we'll put them all on um, level 6, I think. Just have some outright chaos going on while I show off little Mac. Not to mention all the other sort of stuff like Amiibo Fighters and DLC, like the bloody Joker from the Phantom Thieves was just announced. Like, what? Who? I know he was kind of like a sort of character that you might expect to show up in Smash at one point, but to actually see him show up is something else. Yep, and a player smash is here and it works too. You get all the stages unlocked from the very beginning, so you don't have to worry too much about playing anything. Who got Rathalos? Oh no, that's bad. That is a bad sign. That is not good. I think that, yeah, that was two knockouts for me. Sweet. I mean, I used to love this. To be fair, I used to love almost every stage on Melee. So to see every stage from Melee come back in this is just awesome too. To be fair, I'm still getting the shit beat out of me as well, which is absolutely what me playing Smash used to look like. Oh no, black hole, black hole. Yay, I got it! What, did I? Ow. Where am I? Ow. God, even on a, even on a bloody, uh, this is like a 19 inch, 23 inch monitor, it should be, not 19 inch, that's tiny. Even on a 23 inch monitor, it's hard to keep up with everything. Ow. Ow. Cut it out, damn it. I don't think you can play 8, eight player online, at least not without making a custom lobby, but still. Oh no, that final smash. And there's the fake smash ball, which definitely didn't help me out. Poor Peach for that matter. Hi, Peach. Oh, I, got, I got the actual final smash meter, though, so... Good night. And thankfully, this Smash game is on a platform that everybody actually wants, so people actually probably buy it to play it. Although the online thing is a bit... Although the fact that you have to pay 20 bucks a year to play online is a bit much, considering this is Nintendo we're talking about, and they probably won't be supporting the online servers that much, considering they couldn't even bother doing Red Body Voice Chat, but that's neither here nor there. How'd I do? I was plus three. <laughs> and everybody else just kind of fell behind. That's why I put it on number six. That's why I put it on everybody on AI level six, just to be sure. And I get bloody um God damn it. <laughs> I know I got Richter. It's Simon! It's Simon! And Vampire Killer is playing! Because Vampire Killer is the best. Some people say it's Bloody Tears, but no, it's Vampire Killer. It has to be Vampire Killer. I overcommitted. No, no, I'm dead. Fuck. Damn it. Shit. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, well. I got some free rewards, though. The, the Goo Goo Buggy from Mario Kart Double Dash. What, what's that about? Come on. What's that one about? And Battle with Eight Fighters is just eight similarly coloured ice climbers. That... It's a fantastic package overall. It is, it is really quite wonderful. It's inher it's extremely customizable. Has a ridiculous amount of variety. Tons of content. Online actually works pretty damn well and has a lot of things that I really appreciate. And honestly, I can kind of appreciate not having voice chat by default just because we all know what people would be like on voice chat 
any day, and just the amount of stuff. A hundred something stages, seventy something characters, a thousand bloody spirits, just all sorts of neat little things that you can do is really, really nice. And yeah. Some people say that Smash is overrated. I think it gets exactly the amount of praise it deserves. It is a hell of a game, especially this time around. And I recommend it to anyone who owns a Switch. Absolutely anyone. It is a fantastic little game. So I've been here for an hour now, so I think it's about time to shut up and let you actually get back to your playing Smash. Because I imagine that anyone who's watching this channel has probably already bought a Switch to replace their Vita. And everybody who already has a Switch has probably already bought Smash Brothers. So there you go. This has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all next time.